Hello, you Chicago. My name is Mike Basileo. And I'm Liz Stark. And you're watching Maroon TV News. This week's top story. The Common Core State Standards Initiative is a hotly contested topic in U.S. education. On Thursday, the Institute of Politics hosted a panel to discuss the Common Core featuring U.S. Secretary of Education Arne Duncan. Maroon TV's political analyst, Sean Graff, has the story. Thursday, October 24, Secretary of Education Arne Duncan came here to the International House to discuss the implementation of the Common Core. To a packed assembly hall filled with students and teachers alike, Duncan addressed why the Common Core Standards Initiative is needed and how it will help ensure that America's students are prepared to either attend college or enter the workforce by the time they finish high school. In an interview with Tim Knowles, the director of the University of Chicago's Urban Education Institute, Duncan said that the Common Core is partially an attempt to address the failures of No Child Left Behind. According to Duncan, the No Child Left Behind Act encouraged states to dumb down their standards in order to have their students pass those standards and continue to receive federal funds. I think raising standards is one of the most important things that we can do to help all kids if we just have a chance to be successful. Duncan also took questions from the audience in which he was asked about a variety of topics from the overemphasis on testing to the need for more professional development of teachers. There is great confusion amongst the educational community about the goals of Common Core and how it will be implemented. I pressed Mr. Duncan about this confusion and how it can be reduced. So the teachers I spoke to before this event said they were just overwhelmingly confused and they didn't know what to expect. And it really seemed like they weren't necessarily against the Common Core, it was just they didn't know. So why has the effort to roll this out been, it seems so undercover? This is not the most high profile event. Why aren't you on Meet the Press every week? You know, why is this not more in the public? Uh, I'm going to be on Meet the Press. I'll tell you that. Right, right. No, but hey, hey, Barry's a good man. Um, well, the fact of the matter is, I should have said this in there, but uh, you didn't. Many, many polls, 75% of teachers support this. They actually have the overwhelming support. Now, there's still confusion. It's still early. I would argue the general public knows much less than teachers, and we all have an education job to do, and you guys can help in covering this. Uh, you can talk to your friend David Gregory for me. Um, as part of why I'm here, is, this is an important conversation to have. Again, this is to be really clear. This is not, there's no magic, you know, silver bullet here. This is a lot of hard work. It's difficult. It's going to take time, but it's the right thing to do. Already, 45 states have adopted the Common Core, and participation amongst the states is only expected to grow. From the International House, I'm Sean Graff with Maroon TV News. On Monday, UChicago renamed the administration building in honor of Edward H. Levy. Levy, who obtained his bachelor and law degrees from the university, served as the dean of the law school from 1950 to 1962, and the president of the university from 1968 to 1975. In 1975, he was appointed to be U.S. Attorney General under President Gerald Ford. Levy is credited with implementing the Common Core program and reorganizing the college into five divisions. The newly reopened Edward H. Levy Hall features a new walkway tunnel that connects the main quad to the bookstore on Ellis Avenue. The Council on University Programming hosted its annual Blues and Ribs event on Friday. Ryan McNamara has the story. It's something you expect to see in one of Chicago's many Southside clubs, not within the polished stone walls of Ida Noyes. In fact, there's something a little strange about watching you Chicago students get down to the jazzy beats of Chicago blues. As midterms begin to take their toll on the student body, the end of fourth week seems like the perfect time for the Council on University Programming's annual Blues and Ribs event. As its name implies, blues isn't the only attraction that has managed to call up hundreds of UC students from the bowels of the red. Ribs, cornbread, coleslaw, and empanadas foods that go hand in hand with the blues. Of course, students over 21 were able to enjoy a little more than just the food. The promise of free food is enough to lure hundreds of hungry college students to any of them. But the biggest draw for blues and ribs might just be the blues.
blues or is? Uh, blues. Why? Good music. It's good music. Unfortunately, Maroon TV had to leave the party early, but as we left, many students were still just arriving for the all-night party. Blues and Ribs is the first of many events hosted by Coop throughout the school year. For more information on future events, visit their website at coop.uchicago.edu. For Maroon TV News, this is Ryan McNamara. On Wednesday night, the Institute of Politics and the Neubauer Collegium for Culture and Society held a panel looking back at the U.S. involvement in Iraq. Titled, Lessons from the U.S. War in Iraq, Ten Years After the Invasion, the panel hosted several people who were involved with the war. The panels included Peter Mansour, former executive officer to General David Petraeus, and Ken Pollock, a former CIA Middle East analyst and senior fellow of politics in the Middle East at the Brookings Institute. All members of the panel agreed that the Iraq War was mismanaged and expressed hope that the lessons learned during the Iraq War would help prevent mistakes in future U.S. foreign policy. The MAP Lab has been moved from the basement of the Reg to the first floor of Crowder Library. In addition to being moved, the MAP Lab received a new name, the Computer Science Instructional Laboratory, or CSIL. The lab was moved in order to support the increasing interest in computer science at UChicago. For more information, visit csil.cs.uchicago.edu. The CSIL is open seven days a week. Alpha Kappa Delta Phi hosted a date auction on Thursday. Sarah Claypool has the report. At the University of Chicago, getting a date can be a complicated prospect. Thursday night, AKD Phi addressed this issue with a date auction on behalf of the Avon Breast Cancer Crusade, which supports both cancer research and educational initiatives. Chapter President Jennifer Wells Q spoke on how the event came to be. So this cause is actually our national philanthropy, so all of the chapters across the country, we have 48 chapters in the U.S. and Canada, and in October we all coordinate events to work for the Avon Breast Cancer Crusade as our national philanthropy. So we decide on different events, each chapter chooses differently how they'd like to coordinate, but the overall effort is to raise awareness and funds for the Avon Foundation. And this isn't the first time the auctions occurred. We've held a date auction every year for the past few years since we were an interest group and after we became an official chapter of Alpha Kappa Delta Phi. So it's been a growing cause. Each year we add on various events. So at the beginning, the date auction was our only event of the week, and now we have events Monday through Friday. Students representing a variety of organizations came out to be auctioned off and to bet on dates. The auctionees performed talents, working to woo prospective purchasers to bid higher. Matt Moe danced for his talent, representing Sigma Chi. Phoenix member Jennifer Huang performed a physically demanding routine for the crowd. Jen David and Nadia Habibi, roommates from Theta, sang together and were auctioned off as a unit. The people who were auctioned off came with a specific date package, ranging from Foga de Shai to 710 Lanes. Jennifer Huang, on behalf of Phoenix, spoke about her decision to be auctioned my fellow members, like I just like kind of threw out the idea, like, oh, what if I, you know, did the date auction? They're like, yeah, 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 you got to do it. So I ended up doing it. And if you're on the fence about participating next year, Jennifer thinks it's an easy decision. Um, just go for it because like it's such a like low key like you know like down to earth event. Um, so even if you're like nervous about it, I was super nervous. I'm still like shaking, but um, it's for a good cause and it's really fun to like see all the different organizations come out. Sarah Claypool, Maroon TV News. The Slam Poetry Student Organization Catcher in the Rhyme hosted an event on Tuesday. Terry Hines has the full story. On October 23rd, Catcher and the Rhyme caught themselves a superstar in Logan Cafe. During their normal weekly open mic event, the Poetry RSO hosted famous spoken word poet Anise Mojani in the group's first feature of the year. Students performed works with topics ranging from racial struggles and old jobs to heartfelt reflections on hometowns. Poems elicited snaps, cheers, and at times, laughter. After the student performances, Mojani took the mic, starting his performance with his well-known poem, Closer. Come closer. You are quite the beauty. If no one has ever told you that before, know that right now you are quite the beauty. There is joy in how your mouth dances with your teeth. Your smiles are simply signs of how sacred your life actually is, so step into it. Come closer. 
Ojani's performance captivated the audience, leaving the room silent except for snaps of approval. After performing some of his spoken word works, Ojani read from his book, Songs from Under the River. 13. Ten years after the buildings fall, I'm in the airport security line, and the woman asks me if my name, sounding a tad bit foreign, and my face, looking a tad bit Baghdad, asks if the name is a family name. I have never known there to be a different kind. <laughs> After his performance, Mojani stayed around to sign books and talk to any aspiring spoken word performers and audience members. For any students interested in Catcher in the Rhyme, the group holds open mics every Wednesday in Logan Cafe from 7.30 to 10. From Logan Cafe, Terry Hines, Maroon TV News. Got reading? The Regenstein Library hosted a book sale this week, putting over 10,000 old books up for sale. Starting tomorrow, Monday the 28th, all leftover items will be given away for free. You can check out the remaining items in room A10 at the Regenstein Library. For more information, call the library at 773-702-4685. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Maroon TV News. I'm Liz Stark. And I'm Mike Vasilio. Have a great week.